We've gone down to another tip in the Lake of Erie. Long Point Provincial Park in Ontario, Canada. Looks like John got some good footage there of the sign. We're at Long Point, and we're gonna find a Kentucky warbler. That's all you need to know. Oh, oh hello, bird bros. Uh, some people just saw the Kentucky warbler over there, and then over there, a little bit further down that way. And uh, yeah, maybe it's by those trees. Looks like these old fellows are on to something. <laughs> these folks say they see it, but it's far back in the bush. Could this be our Kentucky warbler? I can't see it though. Sean, you? Uh, you got it? I missed it. My super crappy zoom in, I think, confirms that we've got the Kentucky Warbler here. But it isn't a very good shot. Look, and someone just knocked me over. So I think we're going to leave this for a bit and we'll try to get back to it later. Didn't, I didn't see it. <sighs> see anything, John? No. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well what about this chipping sparrow, John? It's a bird. The chipping sparrow is such a beautiful, tiny little bird. They got that black stripe across their face and that coppery colored cap. The body's gray and the wings are like a rufous color. It is a small sparrow. Probably one of the tiniest. It sounds like a sewing machine going. If any of you have ever actually heard a sewing machine before. Oh, and there's a hermit thrush here too. That's a cool bird. Haven't seen that this year. Actually, I have. There are a couple different types of thrushes in Ontario. And if you don't know what a thrush is, it kind of has the same body shape as the American Robin. Looks like John got a good picture of it here. Let's check it out. Note that eye ring and the tail is a bit more on the reddish side than the rest of the body. Now John, what, what do you see so far? Seen two yellow warblers and like six ruby crown kinglets and a purple martin flew over my head. Oh, not bad for end of April. Yellow warblers. Pretty cool bird, especially when it's the first of the year. But then after you see your second, third, 18th, 20th, they become just another basic bird. That's okay, because all birds are cool. Like this ruby crown kinglet. Jokes. Uh, it's pretty cool. But, basic. To tell the ruby crown kinglet from a distance, look for that plump little body and that, that tail there that kind of looks like, like that. It's got two bumps. But don't get it mixed up with gnat catchers. We'll get into that later. What's that sound, John? Seems to be doing it three times in a row. Tell me about it, Sean. I got a brown thrasher here, just singing away in this tree. Brown thrasher. Larger bird, bigger than a robin, and a uh, browny, rusty color. Note that the brown thrasher has that, like, slightly curved bill there, and that bright yellow eye. He's not bragging or anything, but... This fella here has the largest song repertoire of any bird in the world. Let's take a moment to just enjoy this bird's repertoire. So the hunt for that Kentucky warbler continues. 
We want to get a good shot of it here, but it only hangs out on this forest floor. So we gotta search through all these leaves and hopefully find a little yellow colored warbler bouncing about. Oh, I think there's something over there. A bird. Yes, I see it this time. It's Mr. Kentucky once again. Now this warbler is fat. I'll read you the description right out of Wikipedia. It is a sluggish and heavy warbler with a short tail, preferring to spend most of its time on or near the ground, except when singing. So basically, it's slow and fat and short, and doesn't want to waste energy to fly up into the trees. Kentucky Warbler has an all-black cap with black facial markings that stretch forward and touch their eye. Hopping along leaf litter and flipping it up with their bills, the Kentucky Warbler loves to probe for invertebrates. On the floors of hardwood forests is where this bird prefers to spend its time. No further north than the Great Lakes. Not even regularly on the north shore of them great lakes. See there, it's got what kind of looks like a yellow sunglasses on and sideburns. You know, he really does look like Elvis Presley. All right, I think we got a good shot of it there. Got the Kentucky. That's the lifer we wanted for the day. Now time to check out the old cut station where they like to ban birds and stuff like that. All right, so we're heading out from the Long Point campgrounds over to the old cut field station, which is located like right down the road from where we're at on Old Cut Boulevard. It's a bird banding station which helps do valuable research on the birds migrating through the Long Point area. That's what they do there is band birds. And then I guess look at birds and stuff. But yeah, it's pretty cool and it's open to the public. You can just go on in. And then I guess look at birds and stuff. I wonder what our first bird will be. Looks like a white-eyed vireo. They look like they're psychopaths. They do kind of look crazy with that white eye there. It makes them look like they're super alert at all times and it's a great identifying feature. Oh, and there's some blue-eyed Vireo. No, that's not a blue-eyed Vireo. That's a blue-headed Vireo, John. Looks like it's been banded too. Neato! It's got the white pair of sunglasses on. With that pale blue-gray head. And here's another bluish gray bird. A gnat catcher. A blue gray gnat catcher. These little buggers fly around all the time. Hard to get a good shot. Very small, smaller than a chickadee. It's like kinglet, kinglet, blue gray gnat catcher. Those are like the three small, small birds. Besides like a hummer. Blue gray gnat catcher is smaller than the blue headed vireo but kind of has that same blue-gray color on it, and the white eye ring. Do I even have to tell you what this bird is? Uh, maybe you're from like, Syria or something. This is, this is a northern cardinal. Just like the brown thrasher, the cardinal here is singing its guts out. Another reddish bird, the house finch. They got nice wide beaks, so they can crush seeds with ease. There was tons of them here at the feeders at Old Cut, but one stuck out. This one here. Ugh, what's wrong with that guy? It's possible this is a form of avian conjunctivitis, which is common in house finches. Basically, a bacteria infects the membrane surrounding the eye, causing the tissue to swell and become irritated. 
If this infection spreads to both eyes, it can cause the bird to become completely blind. And we saw the bird, the Kentucky Warbler, one more time. Dunn found it twice. Dunn found it twice. Dunn found it the one time, he found it the two times. And we got a double finder. And now we're going to go to the marsh and we're going to like triple, quadruple find all the rare birds. Fingers crossed. Oh, but along the way here, looks like we've spotted a couple ducks. We got a green wing teal in the back and a blue wing teal in front. Got to keep an eye out on those green wing teals because they could be Eurasian. But this one here has that vertical white stripe. I love that kind of dotty, mottled look on the blue wing teal's body there in front. Green and blue, teals there is. All right, we made it to the marsh. It's uh, just another conservation area. The sign literally says, another conservation area. But it's called Crown Marsh. Yeah. Just no sign that says it. No sign, just says another another old conservation area here. And uh, yeah, got some yellow legs behind us. So let's check those out. But we're going to keep our eyes open and uh, maybe spot some other birds. Yip, yip. Yip, yip. All right, let's head out. It looks like pretty barren. Never mind, we got this lesser yellow legs here. Those are first of year sandpipers for us. One way to tell the lesser yellow legs from the greater yellow legs are the calls they make during flight. The lesser yellow legs makes a soft one or two syllable call. Where the greater yellow legs will make a three or four syllable call. Despite their similar appearance to the greater yellow legs, the closest relative to a lesser yellow legs is actually the willet, which we're gonna get to show you in an upcoming episode from Point Peely. All right, John, let's get a move on. I need to find another bird. And another first of year just flew in. A friggin' green heron. Gnarly, man. This green heron didn't seem afraid of us at all. And it was just like striking poses all up and down the shoreline. Much smaller than the great blue heron. Orange legs, beady yellow eye. I mean, I guess that also described with the great blue heron, but I mean, Frick, come on, Google great blue heron, Google green heron, total difference, you'll see. Total difference. And over there, we got a muskrat there. Yep, just running out there, a muskrat. Long Point seems to be like overrun with the muskrats. They're like everywhere. All right, John's in bird mode, but the marsh here has been uh, fairly successful. We got the yellow legs, some killdeer, a muskrat, green heron. And uh, yeah, I think that's the end of the day. Right, John, is it the end of the day? He's saying no, but uh, it is the end of the day. Lots but, of birds you gotta look. Oh gosh, I got people to go see. I got family, they're coming over for dinner tonight. It's like six o'clock already. We're two hours away from home. Cry me river. Oh. Kill deer, kill deer, kill deer, kill deer. Pretty cool, it's a kill deer, kill deer. Doing it's like freaky kill deer kind of dance try to take all the attention away from where its nest is. It's common crackle. Bet you've seen a thousand of them. But I bet you haven't seen many eating snails. Pretty neat. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do 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 Thanks for watching.
If you're looking for more information on Warbler ID, make sure to check out our last video on Warbler ID. Go figure. Become a pro like the Bird Bros. Stay fly.